Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest because he's kind of a big deal in lots of different ways. But I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. The brain. The professor. Your flight school Sherpa. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net. Landmoto.com. Learn anything but anything. InvestorNinjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. Fully caffeinated. I'm very excited to talk to Michael Burnoff. Now, if you don't know who Michael is, he's the president and founder of the Human Communications Institute, a leader in the personal and professional development industry. He works directly with individuals as well as corporate executives who desire to transform their corporate culture in an ever-changing marketplace. His passion for his work is limitless and his dedication to positively impacting the world by empowering every individual is uncompromising. Michael Burnoff, welcome. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be here, both you guys. You know, Mark Scott, thrilled, and I get a, you know, I'm just pumped. I like hearing that intro and then realize, wow, I'm doing all that stuff. It's exciting. You are doing all that stuff, but let's just rewind the tape. Let's do it. And how did you become Michael Burnoff? Well, like the, the, the guy I think, I think that helped us all. I think we get that at birth, right? You know, we become, right. we're named baby, and then they come up with a name, and they're like, okay, and then we all buy into it as a concept. So... I, uh, I got an interesting story. I mean, I very similar to most people. I grew up down the middle, like pretty average, you know, middle class kid in the 80s, you know, lower middle, lower middle, middle, middle class kid. Some people get lucky, get upper middle class. And I grew up uh, wanting more, not knowing how to get it. And my parents always said, work hard and be a good person. And that was probably the worst advice ever for business. Work hard and be a good person because it helps you get started, but it doesn't get you where you want to go. So the big transition is when... I started to realize that there's some things that other people are doing that I'm not or results they're getting. And it's been a desire for the last 20, 25 years to figure out like, what the heck are they doing that I'm not? And how do I do it so I can have what they have? And that's been the obsession of myself and my company now since uh, 2003. Very exciting. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? You know, man, I always, I always say like, when I, when I look at somebody, you know, like it's not, whenever I look at someone that's having something that maybe I want. Okay. So like, even when I got going in the land business, like I would listen to the podcast, I'd listen to you and, and to the other land investors that were on, on the podcast. And I always thought, well, man, if they can do it, I can do it, right? Yeah. Like I, I never wanted to put myself in a situation to where I'm like, oh, well, they're just lucky. Because to me, there is no like luck, right? Like, yeah, luck exists and you get luck, but you create the luck in my opinion. And that's the thing is like, whenever I see someone doing something, I always challenge myself with like, well, if they can do it, why can't I? The only difference is, is that sometimes it takes a little bit longer to figure out the system as opposed to, oh, well, they're doing it, so I can just jump in and do it too. You sometimes have to learn the recipe or the system or the process or the methodology behind it. And I, I think that that's what a lot of people miss is that they just, they, they look at it and they go, well, he's just lucky or she's lucky. Well, maybe but also they figured out something that I haven't figured out. Now let me go figure it out and then I can do it too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, what's interesting about you, Michael, is that, you know, Scott and I, I Scott, how many people we've talked to on the podcast now? Hundreds we've interviewed? Hundreds. Yeah. And yet you have this unique energy that immediately comes through. The first person I thought of as soon as you started talking was Tony Robbins. I get it all the time. <laughs> So there's like this, there's like this communication piece to you, this energy to you that is, is, you know, you just feel right away. So my question is, can Scott and I just by, you know, learning from you, talking to you, can we get that from you? Which leads me to like the real question was, is your life's new rules, getting your mind, body, and spirit running on all cylinders because I get the sense yep. your mind, body, and spirit are running on all cylinders. Scott's is on probably, his is probably on one cylinder. Mine's on half a cylinder. I'm, I, Scott, I'm joking. You're definitely on all three cylinders, but I'm probably like on, on, you know, one and a half cylinders compared to you. I'm running on like nine. You're on nine. So, so t give us what, what are these cylinders? So, so here's the, here's the crux of it all. And this is the one thing I tell everyone. There's one thing that we do 
more than anything. Actually, the, the thing we do permanently all day long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that most people would never look as a solution to getting where you want to go. And it's, it's a word you said a minute ago, but most people wouldn't think about it as, as the answer. And people, I, typically, if I'm on a Zoom, I'll say, so what is it? And I'll give you a, a grand if you can come up with it. And I never get the answer. It's a, they'll say, breathe. What do you do all day? Think about sex. Think about business. They're like this long list of things. And I'll say the one thing that we do 24-7, seven, seven days a week that we don't spend enough time on is we communicate. Uh, sleep is a form of communication. Uh, sales is a form of communication. Being in love is a form of communication. Being pissed is a form of communication. And I, I'm certain of this, this is the most underdeveloped and underutilized asset that we have as human beings is communication. And we take silly communication classes in school on this, but how many people have ever taken a course on how to deal with a deal that doesn't go through or how to deal with a breakup or how to deal with a divorce or how to, how to deal with having a great day, store that in the right part of your brain so you can do it again. Um, how to, like I work with professional fighters, athletes, uh, hockey players, NHL stars. And one of the things I recognize is they communicate with themselves differently than other people and they've accepted the power of their own influence. So I truly believe that you can communicate yourself in and out of anything. And, and Corona was a form of communication. I, people say they're scared of Corona. I'm more scared of birth. You know, birth you're gonna die from. Corona may kill you, I don't know. Birth I'm guaranteed to die from. So just in that phrasing, it gave me a different reality of what's going on. So what I've recognized is people's lives are summed up by how they interact with themselves and how they interact with the people. So a professional athlete communicates with themselves in a way that creates a professional athlete. A guy a, here in town in Scottsdale, Arizona, some, a couple of the biggest land guys in town are buddies of mine. I coach their kids in hockey, wealthy dudes, real successful. They communicate as winners to themselves and they are not going to lose. So that's the one thing. And I'm not talking positive thinking. I'm talking about controlling the picture sounds and feelings inside of their brain to allow them to dominate in life. So there's my quick Michael version, Michael Burnoff, three minute version of a way bigger conversation. Picture sounds and feelings everything in their, in their mind. Every, well, think about it this way. So something happens in your life. Do you believe that a, a transaction, just the word transaction, because that's a big word in your world, has a feeling associated with it to different people. Some people it feels great, some people it's nerve wracking, some people it's a pain in the ass, right? There is a feeling. There is a picture in your head of the last time you had a transaction. If not, you couldn't locate it. And then there is the sound and the stuff that's going on. So we store our entire life's experiences inside of our brain. The question is, where are you putting it? What are you labeling it as? What does it work? How does it work? And most people don't recognize that you're in full control of your communication if you're willing to accept that responsibility. Scott Todd. So Mark, like, uh, okay, so uh, you bought a house before, right? Right. Oh, okay. Mark. Okay, well, got it. Yeah. yeah. So you my know, middle like, name, my, my middle name is Mark. So I get confused. Go ahead. All right. So you know, like the, the one thing I think of is like the last time I went to go buy a house, it was a pain, right? The experience was a pain. The mortgage process was a pain. Everything was a pain about it. And he, I think Michael's on to something there because you know what? In my mind, whenever my wife's like hey, maybe in the future we can go buy like a house. I feel instant pain because I remember all of those things, all of that miserableness around it. But you know what I didn't do is I didn't put a positive association with it, which was the house, right? Like I live in a house, like I got a house. Like there's, I put the negative with it and I'm like, ah, I can't do that. But man, if, if I put a positive on it, how would I view things differently? I kind of like that idea. It's, it's, it's a fascinating concept. And, and what's interesting about it is it isn't just positive and negative. It's actually the word choice. So I'll give you an example, the word divorce, right? People go through a divorce and divorce means shame and doubt and screwed up and made a mistake. Or divorce means from people that actually have moved on that it is a different relationship with the same person. That is a different frame. So one frame is going to be miserable forever and going to feel bad and have guilt. The other frame is, you know what? My relationship with them is different than it was, and now I can move on. It's same with death. I mean, death is either the end, it's over, never going to see them again, or the only people that deal with it well, like certain cultures, say to themselves, death means a different form of a relationship with the same person. Because if you lose somebody you love, they're still with you somehow, some way. The question is, how do you want to frame it to you? So that learning how to market and sell to yourself is the key to making your life be whatever you want it to be. Yeah, very, very interesting concept. So let's just take the, the opposite, right? So what's yep. some of the worst advice you see or hear given in your area of expertise of communication? 
be positive and um, you're doing fine. Don't worry about it. Like I, positive thinking is great, but like I tell salespeople all the time because we all deal with business owners. How you doing? And when they say great, they need to stop that. And the reason why is, I said to a sales guy once, he goes, I'm, I'm doing great. I said, great, what'd you make last year? I made 85,000. Awesome, that, fantastic, that's great. Uh, compared to Bobby Axelrod and Billions, how are your sales skills? And he's like, well, I'm not that good. One of the greatest things we can do is accept we're not where we wanna be with a very simple word at the end yet. I'm not negative, but I'm also here to tell you that the second you accept that what you do is good, it's your average, but it's not what you're capable of, it gives us room to grow. I think this whole positive, pat you on the back, you're doing great, don't worry, limits our success. You're doing really great for now. Based on your current circumstances, congratulations. What you're capable of, dude, you got Michael Jordan abilities. The problem is you're putting him on a pedestal, versus, which means put you on the ground, versus thinking what you could do if you played a full version of you. And I think the worst advice we give people is we help people settle in and they don't realize their full capacity of what they can do as human beings. No, I, I, I totally agree. Scott, you're, you're shaking your head. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you think if you think about it, like just think about in your own life, you know, you get to the point where you're you're happy, right? Yeah. Like you're content, you're fat and happy. That's what the saying says, right? Like you're fat and happy. Well, man, all of a sudden. It's hard to get motivated again, right? Like that's one of the things, Mark, you and I have talked about when we talked about like, what does it take to, to succeed in like our own business? Well, a burning desire is what I always say. Like you gotta have a burning desire to go do something different because if you're fat and happy, well, then there's other ways of being fat and happy. And it's not to go start a land business. Okay. Like there's other ways of doing this thing. So my question to Michael is, okay, Michael, look, I'm, I'm happy in my day job, you know, like, I, and I see this all the time. Like I just read something like this today. Oh, I've got a great day job, but I want to build a passive income. But what happens is in my own experience and watching people who do this, the person says, oh, I'm happy where I am in my day job, but I'm going to go do a side hustle. Well, then they're never as successful as they really want to be in that side hustle because they have, and it's almost like what you just said, they have already committed in their brain, like I'm happy over here. Well, then why are you going to go and like, what is going to be the driving force? Like what's that why that's going to power you through the sucky parts of starting a new business? Like what, what would you tell somebody? Well, you got to be honest with yourself. And I think most people are, they lie to themselves because they don't want to be wrong. So the second that person looks in the mirror and goes, I'm not where I want to be. Three things happen. One is, opportunity presents itself. Like I got a job and make 55,000 bucks a year, make 80,000 bucks a year. I want something else. Your want goes out here. It could be anything you want. You could be a real estate tycoon. You could be Steve Wynn in Vegas. You could be anything you want, right? Opportunity shows up. Number two is massive insecurity. And the reason I say that is you got to realize there's a gap now between what you want and, and who you currently are. So what happens for people is they say to themselves, I want more and I know I'm capable of more, but but it scares me. And in order to in order to change that in people, and this is the, the advice I'd give somebody is, we need to be honest and look in the mirror and go, you know what? Um, I'm settling where I'm at. I'm totally capable of more. This is why I wrote the book, Average Sucks for a Reason, is not me being better than you. It's that that person has an average. Your average thing that you do automatically is get up, go to work and do your job. You could do that in your sleep. You could do that hungover. You can do that any way you want. You could do your current life. The thing you don't know how to do, which you've never done that'll get you the life you want, is outside your average. So here's the crazy part. In order to make more money, in order to be in better shape, in order to have better relationship, you first need to admit that the one you have currently isn't good enough, which is painful for people. So someone's gotta look in the mirror and go, dude, my job's not good enough. Nobody wants to do that, but that is the only way it's gonna work. My job is really wonderful for what I thought up eight years ago. 15 years later, it's not what I can do, what I'm capable of doing. So. My advice I'd give them is ask them, is it all you can do or was it a good idea prior? And most people, like, including me, I got to a business, I'm doing millions of dollars a year. I bought a $2 million building here. I own real estate. I got all kinds of things going on, hundreds of thousands of clients. And then I'm like, wait a second, that's great and all, but what can a 42 year old man do? That's me today. What can that guy do moving forward? My goals were great for a 23 year old kid. What can a 40, almost 43 year old man do? And I think the biggest problem is we forget to upgrade ourselves. We're still using iPhone one instead of the X or whatever's available these days. No, no, I, I love it. So let's talk about average sucks. What are we going to yep. learn in average sucks and why did you write it? 
get the book, point blank, get the book, don't question it. And I'm just gonna tell everybody. And the reason I'm gonna say that is I wrote it for me. I wrote it for people that got manipulated by an idea that we didn't realize. So I'm gonna give you the quick version. For my whole life, I always felt like something stopped me from becoming what I'm capable of being. Like I would do everything I could up to a level and then I stopped. And no different than feeling on the high dive board. And I thought it was just me. And then I did some research. It took me a decade to write the book because there was nothing else out there like this in the world. And I realized that something happened and we all got scammed, I'm gonna call it, in the 40s and 50s after, it's kind of a similar situation to what we're dealing with now is whole Corona thing. After World War II, they said, hey guys, we could, this world's like, people feel unsafe. What can we do to make them comfortable? And they invented something that never existed before. It's called the middle class. See, a little house in the prairie when we were kids, broke or poor, that was it. And they invented this thing that made life easy and they eliminated natural adversity. And adversity is what gets us to grow. So for like 30 to 40 to 50 years, life got real easy. We became average, but because, because we still had to walk places, you still had to go to a grocery store, wait seven days to get your photos. We had like built in adversity. Come the 90s, technology and everything got easy, overrode biology. Life got so easy, we became weak as people. So the book is about that mystical force, that feeling that stops you from getting what you want, why it's there, what to do about it, and how most of us are living a BS version of our lives. We're half of ourselves to our wives and husbands. We're half of ourselves in our jobs and businesses. And most of us are living an average life of what we're capable of. And we're giving Michael Jordan and Wayne Gretzky this pedestal, but we're not living the full potential of ourselves. So the book is a wake up call. I always say, if you spend 20 bucks on a book and you turn it into 30, that's an amazing investment. I want you to turn it into thousands of dollars in happiness, better quality of life. So here's the best part about the book. You'll finish it. I wrote it for people with ADD entrepreneurs that they can start it, finish it, and a few hours later, know the answer for their life. So it is about why you don't get what you want. Most importantly, what to do about it. The only book of its kind. Scott Todd. Look, I, I just ordered the book. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, what do you say? Order the damn book. I don't know. Get the book. book. Get yeah, the book. book. Get the yep. book. I don't know what to yep. say. Like, it's, it's, it's a simple, you'll read it. Like I spent my whole life believing I couldn't do something, Scott. And then I realized at 40 years old, wait a second. I made that a rule like you did with the house. Like you're stopping yourself some from ridiculous investment opportunities possibly because of that transaction issue. Same with me. Like I got to believe, like someone said refi the other day. Thank God my arms and everything out of the properties just refied because of the, the market switch. But like, I get that feeling. Oh my God, I got to get the paperwork. I got to switch that in my head because that paperwork switch could be worth an extra five to 10 grand a month that I can reallocate into Tesla stock or something else. So we've got to learn to control that communication in our head. So it's exciting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Scott and I talk about this all the time in our, in our own coaching programs yep. where it's 90% mental, 10% yep. of it is how to, and the, the technical aspects of, of doing a, a land deal and, and everything yep. that goes on with that. Um, so it, it's, you know, this is a really, uh, the, the timing of this podcast it couldn't be better. So what do you think of when you hear the word successful? I think of a lot of different things. You ask me personally what I think, because I'm not driven by the word. And what's interesting is I couldn't figure out why I couldn't become successful for years. Then I realized the word doesn't drive me. I think successful, I had to reframe it. What it means is, is being a person that actually does what they say they're going to do. And I, and I believe that success is a human being like, how many people say, I'm gonna make six figures this year and then they just don't. Successful is a person that literally dominates and owns what they do and how they do it. And they have the ability to be in full control of how they live their life. So that's, that's what successful is to me, is being able to be a person that is in control of my destiny. So that's success. I mean, cars and boats and houses, that stuff's great. I, you know, I remember when I first got my first Escalade, I've had eight of them now. Um, because I get a new one every year because I don't drive it much. And I remember getting, I'm like, oh my God, I got an Escalade. I always wanted one of these. I never had a car until I was mid twenties, right? And then um, you like it for like three days, then you step on some mud, you get it on the floor and you got 39 more payments. So like that stuff doesn't make you happy. Success is knowing that you got that smirk in your face going, I can dominate this. I can, I can, I can do that. I know how to do anything. Let me figure this out. That's successful. It's a way of being it's not an achieve, it's not a, an achievement of things. Yeah. So just to, to kind of paraphrase, it's kind of a more an internal confidence yep. as opposed to anything external out there. I mean, 
all that stuff is nice. The big cars, the house, the vacations, yep. it's very nice, but it's, you know, we'll all adapt to it. Hit That's all transactionable. Right. Like anybody, right. I was telling anyone, hey, you really, really want a Ferrari? It's like four grand a month or whatever it is to get one. That's not complicated. There's a lot of things you can do to figure that out. If that was really important to you, that's not a complicated thing if it really matters to figure out. It's being able to live a life and not be concerned. See, there's this beautiful feeling you get in life knowing that everything's gonna be okay. Like I had a blip when the corona thing happened of about eight minutes where I'm like, oh my God, I can't do events. I just lost several million dollars. And then I'm like, oh, okay, wait a second. I'm Michael Burnoff, I can do what I want. Wait a second, I got this. And we um, recalibrated and five minutes later, we redesigned our, our office here huge space we do events live in for a studio and we're doing events there you go there you go That's so, success. so it's all reframing whatever happens out there you just reframe it it's my next book is called how to market to yourself i'm writing it's how to market yourself it's literally we had to market to others but we don't market correctly to ourselves i'm working on writing that now all right scott todd what are you reframing these days oh i would just say that i i mean i do i do think that um that it, it that, that michael's right because like it's funny because right before this podcast like literally right before this podcast i was uh taking a little break and i was reading this book i was reading this book about this guy that flew around the country uh, flew around the world okay like he flew himself by himself all around the world you know uh 98 days in flight just traversing the the continent and i'm like man that's crazy and i'm looking at the plane that he was flying and i'm like wow, let me see that plane. And I'm looking at the plane, I'm like, man, that's a lot of money for that plane. Let me see how much these planes go for. And then all of a sudden I realized like, almost what Michael just said, you know what? It's like two, two grand a month. Like, uh, look, to somebody I know two grand a month is a lot of money, right? Like, I'm not trying to say it's not a lot of money. However, when I, when I reframed that, I'm like, you know what? Literally, I was doing this right before we came in here. I'm like, you know what, man? That's like me going and, and, and buying, let's say three properties or I'm sorry, eight properties. Let's go, I go buy eight properties. I sell those eight properties. I create the note payment for those eight properties. Mm -hmm. Guess what, man? All of a sudden, I got somebody that's paying for this big plane that just if I look at the raw numbers, I'm like, there's no way you can afford that today yet. But when you break it down to the simple one, you go, well, this, is, this would be my profit if I got eight notes, paying me these eight notes, this is the monthly payment. Bam, all of a sudden, guess what? I'm like, I can go buy eight properties. In fact, I just did it last week. I can sell these. I sold eight properties last week. And then I'm starting to think like, holy cow, I got one customer who's paying the note payment on this plane for me every month. What's stopping me? Other than my wife saying, what? <laughs> so, so, so Michael, let's talk about the price yep. that we have to pay yep. for greatness or achieving our goals or whatever it is in life because no one's going to ride for free so let's just let's just take the last dance the netflix documentary about michael jordan yep. and there's this one scene and you know they kind of lead up to it and they show how this guy you know he worked harder than all his teammates but he pushed them and he pushed them and he pushed them and he was admittedly a tyrant and his teammates didn't he was not beloved in that locker room he was feared and there was a point in the in the documentary he gets emotional and they asked him was it worth it and he's like yeah it, it, you know he's like if you couldn't deal with it you know that that's the price i had to pay to to win championships it's great. and he got real emotional about it so my so my question is how do you help people deal with that reality that if you want to do these things there is going to be a price and you're going to have to you know forge yourself through that fire how do you do it Here, here's the current price it's only one thing and it's a word you never no one's going to think this is where i'm going the only price you need to pay is your current identity and that is the price that's it that that's it that is what in order to tell your wife what you really need or how it really feel you need to sacrifice your current identity or put it out there on the limb. Michael Jordan had a pansy ass weak thing at one point until he decided I'm not that anymore. And then he became Michael Jordan. He sacrificed his weak identity for his real true identity. And I was, um, I was flying on a plane where back when people flew without masks and I, I ran into Tony Orlando. If you guys remember him back in the day, Tony and Don, I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, I sat next to him 
and um, very was, he used to sing with Sinatra and everybody, very Elvis oh, everybody yeah, yeah. back in the day. And he said to me, he said, most people aren't willing to be themselves. And I, and I just portray that. And I think it's like Michael accepted all six foot six of himself. And that's the price we pay. So guy years ago said to me, he goes, Michael, I'll tell you, I'm six foot six, me personally, Michael Bernoff. And he goes, you should start acting like it. And I realized that he goes, you're living a five foot 11 life. Are you willing to sacrifice your own averageness, your own current identity of how the world sees you and how you see you for the person you're capable of being? And that is the scariest thing in the world. That is the only price we have to pay. Because the second you own it, like I, I, you become Mike Tyson, you just accept your reality. I'm going to give up who I was and change the identity of champion. It changes everything. So that is the biggest price we have to pay is it's not a talk about thing. It's like, are you willing to be different than you currently are, which is the identity shift? And that is the biggest perspective shift in the world. All right. Well, Michael, this has been really, uh, your mentorship has been great, but now we're at that point in Thank the you. podcast where we're going to ask you for a tip of the week, a website, a resource, another book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Something for me or something just in general? Just your tip of the week. Something that you want to, you want to share with the world. I mean, our, we've been, we've in our been billions helping, of listeners. Yeah. We've been, we've been helping people since this whole Corona thing happened. We've been like literally serving and helping everybody we can with um, getting them in front of us. People say, Oh, Michael, I heard this. What's the next thing you do? I, I like to just spend time with people. When Corona hit, one of the biggest things we said to ourselves is how do we help as many people as possible? So we've just been spending time with people in a very simple way. So we put together something called call to action time.com. It's five days. We kind of help you get this stuff in check. There's no strings attached. There's nothing. So it's call to action time.com. And it's only for people that want to change that identity that we just spoke about. And we'll do it in five days. It's incredible. I recommend it to both of you guys too. And you'll love it. So there's my big tip. I can recommend a million things, but that's what I'm most comfortable with because I can control that. All right. Awesome. Call to action Call time. to action time. Call to action call, time. Call to action. I'm going to go right there. Call time. Call to action time. Dot com. All right. It. So before, if we go to Scott Todd's tip of the week, I have to just mention our sponsor this week is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally change your life. Start building your passive income machine. Go up that mountain of land investing with Scott Todd. He's done it thousands of times as your Sherpa. Go up there quickly, safely, efficiently. Learn more. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with uh, Mike or Scott and learn more. Okay, Scott Todd, what is your tip of the week? Look, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like taking the easy button today, Mark. Just get the book. Average sucks. Just go Average do it. Average sucks. Like, it, it does can, suck, though. Can I beat it? that? Can't. You can't beat it. All right, See? I'm going to get it right now. Go so shop it. now. I'm getting the book. Do can it. I get it on Audible? I, I love Audible. Okay, AverageSucks.com. Uh, our Audible version's coming out. My publisher said, spread it out. We wrote the book in a way with the language patterns that's designed to actually get inside of your brain the way it's written. It's not written like a normal book. You'll pick it up and you'll be on page 96, 45 minutes later and go, how the hell did that happen? So, wait, okay, so really we want to get both in. We want to get the audio and yeah, audio is coming out. Audio is coming out in a couple months. Just finishing that up right now. It's ridiculously good as well. Okay. Like I like to get mine. Both mine's going to be here on September the 10th. Nice. Go to average sucks.com. Once you Get it because we're giving away a bunch of audios along with it. So go to averagesucks.com, put in your Amazon or your Barnes and Nobles receipt, and we're going to send you about eight audios also. So. Well, my tip of the week is learn how to, you know, just be incredibly persuasive and dominant and be your best self and get out of your comfort zone. Don't be average. Learn more. Go to michaelburnoff.com. We'll have a link to it because nobody can spell Michael or Burnoff, michaelburnoff.com and get the book. Michael, this has been great. Are, are we good? That was great. I appreciate all of you and uh, fantastic. And yeah, that's great stuff. Great. Scott Todd, are we good? We're good, Mark. 
I want to thank the listeners and just remind them the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Michael Burnoff from michaelburnoff.com is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 uh, wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less. So please do it. All right, Scott, you ready? I am. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Michael's like, if I knew I you guys were going to end, end like that, I don't know if I would have showed up. But thank I you, love Michael. it. That was great. All right. Are we off? We're, 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 we're off now. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording. Yeah, thank you. And then both of you, can you email Michael Burnoff at G-